The Listening Heart with Pastor Randy Dignan. Hello, Pastor Randy Dignan here at Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. Do you have some questions? Well, I sure do. I'm looking forward to these programs we're going to offer to you because that's the theme of these programs is about the subject of asking questions. You know, I think sometimes preachers and Christians put a negative emphasis on asking God questions about subject matters of life. You know that God's okay with us asking Him questions? In these many programs, you're going to see guests coming on the program and asking you questions right there on the spot. Questions about the Bible. Questions about sign language and deaf culture. And to be honest with you, if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you I don't know the answer. I'm so glad we have a God in heaven that knows all the answers to our questions. And I'm so thankful for a Bible that gives us the answer to our questions. You see, it's okay to ask an all-knowing God questions. He may not answer the way we want. He may not answer in our time frame. But God will answer our questions. The gospel is full of people, disciples, and even the Pharisees themselves asking Jesus Christ questions on a regular basis. And Jesus always had an answer. You know, the questions that we have, they vary. Some of you might be going through a tough time and have questions relating to that. Some of you might be going through a great time and have questions relating to that. Well, the big question we want to answer is the question of how we know for sure going to heaven. That will be emphasized on these programs. We're also going to answer the question about how to build a relationship with God, especially through the book of Psalms, which I just have a, a passion for to teach and preach on. And, of course, we'll introduce some beautiful music through sign language, too. So looking forward to this great program we have ahead. People are going to be asking me questions about the Bible, questions about sign language, questions about deaf culture. I sure hope I have the answer. Guess what? Many times I don't, but God always has the answer. So I challenge you to get ready. Get your questions ready, because here comes some answers from the Bible. God is good, and stay tuned. So here comes the program. Hello, and welcome to a special Listening Heart. I'm thrilled to have family, lingering family, because of the holiday season. Uh, recently, we did a program with the whole family, my brother and his family, and uh, my sister and her husband and the kids. But this time, we're going to the original death of my family that obviously is uh, most important to me here. My dad, mom, uh, my sister, and then my mom's baby brother, missionary Ray Bradley. Today, I want to take a, a little while to have them explain to us about their experiences growing up in the deaf world. A lot has changed for the good, but uh, at the start it wasn't that way. Dad started off going to a deaf school in Florida. Mom and Uncle Ray had a deaf school in Ohio. And then my sister, she's been in schools all over America, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But let's start with Dad. Your experiences at Florida School for the Deaf and Blind, deaf and, blind and how much it's changed since you were a student there. First of all, you know, I, I grew up uh, in a deaf family. And so we were able to use American Sign Language as our mode of communication and our language. And I thought it was just normal because I was in the house uh, where that communication was what we used. But then my parents sent me to a school when I came of school age. And we lived in Florida at the time. And, and at that time, sign language was forbidden. It was strictly oral method. And I found myself being very confused. Like, wait, is there, is there a problem with my speech? I mean, is there a problem with the way I'm communicating? Is there... I mean, I'm doing just fine with my sign language, but, but then I would see the teachers that were teaching me just showing disgust and frustration by their facial expressions because of my lack of ability to speak. And then I would go home and rejuvenate my sign language. And even some of my hearing family members back home knew some sign language, so communication was fine there uh, with my aunts and uncles and my grandparents. They weren't the best signers, but they still signed you know, well enough for, for to communicate. My cousins and... But then I'd go to school and it was like, I just got confused. You know, the school was oral method, the home was sign language, school oral method, home sign language. And then in some, I, internally I started to get a little confused. I started to get older and started to realize that, wait a minute now, I've been given this mind of my own and I started to maybe fight back a little bit. And it started to help me improve with my education and all that comes with it in my life. So you, when you said you fought back, you mean you were frustrated with oral and wanted to bring sign language in. Amen. Because I knew that the oral method was not going to work. It was not going to work for me. And they were still trying to continue to force me to do it, hoping that I would someday, you know, all of a sudden become a fluent speaker. And there's just no way. So they were trying to make you hearing speak. And you can't hear, but they're trying to make you speak. Right. And so you're thankful for American Sign Language, obviously. 
and dad and mom, all of them had an advantage that many deaf don't have, and deaf viewers are watching, that they have deaf parents. All of them have deaf parents. Made a big difference. Now, shift over here, different part of the country, a few years later, because they're both a little bit younger than dad, they had a different experience. Ohio School for the Deaf, what was it like there? Let's start with mom and then go to Uncle Ray. I went to the deaf school, similar experience as my father. You know, I uh, came from a house where we all signed it, and all of a sudden we went to oral method in the classroom. Now, when I went to the dormitories, I was able to sign, but you're not going to believe this. If I sign in school, they'd make me sit on my hands or even smack my hand with a ruler. They would tell me, oh, you speak so good, you talk so well. And so, you know, we would just practice day in and day out how to speak. And one dorm counselor took me out in public and had me meet some hearing people. And she would say, talk to these people. And I was talking, and they're like, oh, wow. So I actually believed this lie that I was a good speaker and I could talk well. And, and I told my father when I went home one time that they took us out publicly. They had us singing in public. And they had us speaking in public and hearing people were clapping and applauding. And then when I was about... 12 or 13, the same as my husband, I started to realize that when I would go public places and I would speak, the hearing people would be like, what? 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 And that's when I thought, you know what? I've been lied to. I, I'm done with that. And uh, the teacher had a hard time trying to get me to use my voice. I'm like, no. I know I'm not able to speak. And uh, I want to focus on my sign language. But in public, you know, a lot of times when I was growing up, we were embarrassed to sign publicly, though, because so many hearing people looked down on our sign language. They thought it was a an odd language. It was weird. What's wrong with you? You you talk like a crazy person. Hands are flying. But as we got older and uh, grew up, there was more progression, and America started to accept sign language. And and it's really come a long way from sign language is ugly to man. I want to learn sign language. It's beautiful. The attitude has changed, and I feel <clears throat> much more comfortable with the hearing people than when I grew up. So technically, you were lied to by the teachers. You, you were lied to because they said your voice is good. She said true. That's true. Our Uncle Ray similar, maybe a little different. Uncle Ray's is pretty much exactly the same. I remember growing up, you know, two or three teachers of mine, the first three years maybe, didn't sign at all. But after the fourth, fifth grade, they started seeing more sign language in the school. And growing up, it was just, it was very similar. They would say, you have such good speech, you have wonderful speech. One time I decided to go to the store, just like my sister just said. And I started talking and no one understood me. And uh, But I thank the Lord, you know, that... I was able to move on, and, and because it goes back to the background that I had with deaf family uh, signing since I was a, a baby growing up. And so, you know, I got the education because I had the opportunity to communicate sign language. And of course, now in South America, I've been in three different countries and seen how many deaf people can't read right because they have no fundamental language, which is sign language. And I feel so bad for so many deaf people uh, that don't have what I had. I grew up in a home where there was sign language. You know, deaf schools, the deaf schools definitely helped me. But sign, having a, a sign language background with my family is really what helped me. So really it's come a long way. And, and really, sometimes people watch this program and think, wow, they can't speak. Well, you're deaf. They're not hearing. You've never heard sound, so it's hard to speak. So now you see we have the oldest man uh, progressing. Now let's get to the younger person here. Jennifer, explain your experience growing up in the deaf world and education system. Well, like they've all said, you know, I came from a deaf family also, so I had communication established from birth. I had two older hearing brothers, but they both signed, so I was in a good communication situation. Now, my time, when my elementary school days, oral method was not the method of teaching. However, it was signing exact English, you know, early elementary ed, first, second, third grade. So I had to sign exact English, and it was very awkward for me because at home I would just use American Sign Language, and uh, it just got... You know, awkward. So as I got older, it started to change, and I started to realize, hey, you know what? Teachers were saying, hey, you use the mode you feel comfortable with, so I can use American Sign Language in class. And uh, and of course, I went to deaf schools, I went to mainstream schools, I went to public schools with teachers, and many interpreters uh, used ASL, so that helped me with all those different experiences. Also, as you mentioned, the teachers uh, in my day allowed me to sign, and the interpreter allowed me to sign whatever I want. Whereas my parents, my uncle had a different experience. But one thing I always had to face was the hearing students staring at us. At my time growing up, you know, hearing people were a whole lot more, well, how should I say, they were more like curious, maybe intrigued by sign language. Like, wow, this is, why are you moving your hands so wildly? Now it's everybody wants to. Uh, of course, growing up, it was a little different. They had more of a weird outlook on it, but now it's pretty neat. So there was a little bit of embarrassment growing up. Now I've met many deaf people who, boy, they had no interpreter in their classrooms. 
and no communication at all. They would try to read lips, they try to just take some notes, and they would fall behind in the educational system. So I'm thankful for parents who demanded interpreters in my class, who said they have to have an interpreter in my class. I can't imagine sitting in a class with all these hearing people and not having an interpreter, so I'm so grateful for what I had and stop being embarrassed and be proud of who I am and the language that I use. Um, it's okay. It's okay. And then in middle school, uh, more and more people were interested in learning sign language, so that helped a lot. And uh, I felt almost popular. Was that the only way you could become popular in school? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I want to shift a little bit. We have a few minutes left in this segment to my Uncle Ray because he knows not just English and signage, but Spanish. And people seem to have a respect or understanding that you speak Spanish. Oh, okay. We expect you not to be fluent in English. But you use sign language. Why aren't you fluent in English? And I often tell people that deaf people's English is better than hearing people's sign language. Now, you had to learn Spanish, too. How do you explain about how you had to learn to respect another language and culture while you learn it, while you also are experiencing your own language? That's important, too, right? Yes, it is. You know, for the purpose of reaching the deaf people, I have to know Spanish because the country in which I minister speaks Spanish. So when I got to Peru for the first time and worked with uh, the missionary there, I knew no Spanish, no Spanish at all. So I started learning Spanish word by word, vocabulary, little by little. And then I had a missionary, a deaf friend, who gave me uh, a textbook, a high, school, a high school textbook, and I started studying on my own, and I've been going on ever since. Now I'm able to preach, teach in Spanish so that the deaf people can learn the Word of God through Spanish. Amen. And, and I think it's great because now I tell people all the time, I, I know three languages, ASL, English, half of Spanish, and half of woman. And people always laugh when I tease about that, but... But the fact is you learning Spanish and also briefly explain the difference between ASL and Ecuador Sign Language. There's different sign languages too. When I got to Ecuador 23 years ago, I started asking the deaf, you know, that new sign language, what's the sign for this? And they would tell me that sign and I realized that Ecuador had its own sign language. But many, many words they would say, there's no sign for it. No sign for it. We don't know what it means. There wasn't enough education in their uh, uh, background and upbringing. So I started adding American Sign Language to it. So it almost becomes half, uh, I guess, Ecuadorian Sign Language, half American Sign Language. And so I've been able to preach and, and work on that. But now that it's, it's spread out throughout side of our own church, now they're starting to use American Sign Language and Ecuador Sign Language too. But about three years ago, they decided to publish a book, a textbook, a sign language book that is Ecuador Sign Language. And I looked through it, and there's a lot of American Sign Languages in there. So it's accepted, but they still use Ecuador Sign Language half and half. And like, for example, father and mother, this is a sign for it is American Sign Language in Ecuador. It's father with like a mustache, and then mother, mama on the side of the cheek there. So similar. Um, doubt, the sign for doubt, and then this is the sign for doubt in Ecuador. And I like that sound, like you're swinging back and forth, you're not sure. Eternal or everlasting, this is the sign for everlasting in Ecuador. I like that sign too. So some of the signs are pretty neat, some are different, but you just accept their language and their culture. Wonderful. Well, we're going to get into that in just a little while, and uh, you have the best of both worlds, knowing both languages. So, All right, the next segment, I want to talk more about the need to reach the deaf globally, and so stay tuned, and we'll see you in a few. Hello, I'm Pastor Nick Dignan of Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. You may have seen my brother's program, The Listening Heart. Well, we just want everyone to know that if there's anything we can do to be a help to you and your family, please feel free to contact us by going to our website at www.bbcjc.com. Or if you're ever in our area, here's a church that loves and cares for people. We'd love to meet you and have the chance to visit with you and worship the Lord with you. May God bless you and your family. And take care. Welcome back to a different segment. I want to spend a little time talking to, again, my father, mother, and sister who were born and raised in America, my Uncle Ray, who's also born and raised in America, but has ministered in Peru, Bolivia, and now Ecuador. Recently, I was preaching in the Bahamas and was informed that there are 350 million deaf people on this planet, and only 2% are saved. And right now, as we've heard but statistically, the deaf are the third most unreached people group in the world, but number one in America. I recently started a new ministry where I Facebook Live, where I give devotionals. When I sign in and talk like I'm doing now, I get several thousand views. When I sign only like this, no voicing at all, I get 10 to 15 to 20,000 views because the deaf are hungry. So I want to start first with my dad who 
really made the point a while ago about the communication and, and the language. Why are so many deaf people bitter towards church or don't like church? Why? I think the big reason is a lot of times at church, we feel like that we are being manipulated by people. They control us. They tell us what to do when we don't really have the ability to do things on our own, to try to understand with our own language, on our own terms, you know, to teach Sunday school ourselves, to preach ourselves. And all of that is based on American Sign Language, and that will help, you know, other deaf people catch up without any problem. So that's exactly right, because one of the reasons why I love having my uncle in the program is he is deaf himself. So a deaf kid in Ecuador sees, deaf man, you can do it, I can do it. How do you become that role model in the church so that you can give them the gospel, right? That's important. How do you do that? Well, to me, the first of all, you start teaching sign language. That's where it all starts. And then they realize that deaf can. And then they get a motivation to, uh, to learn the gospel. In Ecuador, most of the deaf people that come to our church and ministry, to the school ministry, they get a good job. You know, a lot of people are like, wow, I'm impressed when you compare them to other deaf people because they did not have that sign language exposure. They quit. They get mad. They get bitter. They, because of a lack of communication, they quit their jobs and all that. But when they have that foundation, of course, it all starts with salvation. When they go out to the workplace, a lot of the bosses are pleased with them because they, they have that communication. Because they have communication background, they have some education, that made a difference. And in Ecuador, we already know, you've mentioned it before, but you find many kids 10, 11 years old who don't even know their name, right? Correct. That's correct. They have no knowledge of their name. One boy, I remember, he came at 12 years old. He'd been in school five years. He had learned to copy from the chalkboard or from the board, but understood nothing. He came to our church, then he came to our school, he graduated from high school, and now he's one of our teachers in our school. And he preaches sometimes, and he just does a good job preaching. What a blessing. It makes your work worthwhile. But now, but now, even in America, my mom, probably in our particular church here, Jefferson City, Missouri, she has probably reached more deaf children with the gospel. But even in America, how many times when you talk to a deaf child, teenager, they don't know any Bible? You often? Yes, many times. Many times. Many of them will just say, you know, I went to church with hearing family members, and uh, they would just say, here, here, read this book, keep quiet. And they dreaded going to church because it was a full hour where they got nothing out of it. And so, to, you know, they know nothing from beginning to end about the Bible. So when I witness to them and try to give them the gospel, I have to go back to the start. Sometimes I have to talk about Adam and Eve and, and even go through the Mosaic Law to finally get into Jesus Christ coming. Because of our sins, He came, He died for us, He lived again, He gives us hope, and these deaf people are just astonished. They think, man, I only went to church just because it was a good thing to do, to be a good person. But you mean I can get salvation and I can go to heaven someday? And they're almost stunned. And um, I just realized that so many of them are missing out. And, you know, they just didn't understand about salvation. You know, I go to church, but I knew I understand, and now they finally uh, have an understanding. And of course, we've even met deaf people who said, have pastors who say, well, we'll just baptize you. You're deaf. You get a free pass. We'll baptize you. You get to go to heaven because you have bat you've been baptized. But they never understood to receive Jesus Christ in the heart. So sad, so sad. And Jenny, you've also worked with many deaf kids. They've asked you questions. I know sometimes the state, you're not a teacher now, but the state, you have to be careful. But when the kid asks you questions, how would you answer them in the school setting? You know, I, when they ask me questions, I answer. You know, if I'm, a, if I'm asked a question, obviously I had to be careful, maybe be a little bit neutral, but I answer their questions. And I had asked my boss even one time, and they, she said, if they ask you the question, you can answer the question. Don't, you know, influence your beliefs on them, but you can answer the question. And they knew I went to church. They knew my brother was a pastor. They knew all those things. So they knew when it came to religious or spiritual matters, they could ask me questions. And they could, you know, we could talk about some things after class, lunchtime, things like that. After school, sure, you know, you can ask me any question you want, and I would answer that. And thank God we need Christians in the deaf schools. Now, based on everything you said, I'm going to ask this question for whoever wants to answer. God's number one goal is to communicate His love and salvation to all people. And thank God we have many, many different ministries in the world, but why does it seem like the deaf... Well, I'll actually I want to ask that. Why is sign language so different from English? You said a little while ago... Um, about that, then we'll ask you all that same question. Most people don't really understand or comprehend until I give this example that, you know, English is a spoken and written language. But when it comes to the deaf, American Sign Language, 
It is a visual language only, period. That's all it is. And that makes a big difference because if God wants to communicate the gospel to us, salvation, the cross, communication is key, key. So anybody has a comment, I'm open to that. Mom and then Uncle Ray. Mom, many, many hearing people don't understand that when they ask me, you know, why do they have to learn American Sign Language? Why don't they just learn signed English? I'll just say, look, when deaf people look and see a person using signed English, it just it goes over their head. They daydream. They don't pay attention. They don't understand. But American Sign Language, it just clicks. And I'll, they'll say, well, give me an example of that. I mean, I don't understand what you mean by that. I mean, I can use English. I say, okay, fine. So I write an English sentence on the wall. Do you want to go to the store with me to buy some ice cream? And I just had to do that whole sign. And, and of course, the, the hearing person would be like, that's perfect. No, that's not perfect. Instead, in ASL, you and me, store, buy ice cream. And all of a sudden, the hearing person's like, wow, it's easier. Yes, it is easier. And now, instead of a long lecture, a monologue, the deaf say, that's my language. It's my American Sign Language. And you don't have to elaborate because American Sign Language is its own language. Great point. ASL is its own language. Amen. Uncle, you want to say something? And yes, I, uh, I want to talk about one man in particular, a deaf man. He was 48 years old. His aunt and uncle were Christians. Both of them had a burden for him, their, their nephew, uh, of course. And they prayed and prayed that God would send a missionary there. And, of course, we showed up. And we found him through a visitation program we have. And the aunt and uncle were so thrilled. And said, they brought the nephew to us. And the nephew came in just bitter, just bitter, had a bitter look on his face. He was angry. And I said, here, have a seat. I want, to, I want to talk to you a little bit. 48 years old, no communication, no sign language, nothing. No sign language, no structured sign language at all. Maybe some gestures, he could point at things. 48 years old, nothing. So just bitter, angry. He came, looked at us, and I said, hey, this is the sign for tree, and I pointed to a tree on the side. And he looked still angry at me. I said, okay, look, watch. Tree, there's a tree. He looked at the tree, and he signed tree, and I said, yep, that's a tree. A door, see the door? This is the sign for door. And he said, door? And he immediately he started coming to church. He eventually got saved. And eight months ago, he passed away. And so I thank God he got saved and he's going to heaven now. And that story always, I, I, I've heard that story many times. I never get tired of that. Um, wow. So you can, you can see in the eyes of a deaf child when they understand, that's my language. And ASL or Ecuador, Ecuadorian sign language, is your own language. And I know as Christians, you shouldn't have pride, but at the same time, we need to let deaf know you have their own language. How important is it to, this is for whoever, maybe a sister, how important is it for you to have a language, your own language? That's a hard question because it's really hard to explain that, you know. It's, it's communication. It, it's life. It's culture. Communication, right? Culture, everything. And my my own family, my wife and kids have learned that there is a culture, there's a language, and you've seen in the eyes of it. I've seen it too. A deaf child looks. If they brighten up, I preach in the Bahamas. They have a lot of English signs. But when I preach in ASL, the deaf like it more because English sign language is not its own language. It is English and sign language. So we have two minutes left in this particular segment. I want you to maybe just express how important it is to take our language and give the gospel to every deaf person possible. Whoever wants to answer that. Dad says, uh, I, you know, a lot of people get the impression that, you know, we got to invent, we got to reinvent the wheel, we got to invent uh, a sign for every word. No, we don't. We're fine. Some words, some vocabulary words, we don't have a sign for them. That's okay. We can fingerspell it. And that's acceptable. And once we fingerspell it over and over, we then read it fast. <laughs> While many hearing people say, oh my goodness, you fingerspell so fast. No. It's a part of our language. It's a part of our culture. You learn to understand that the whole context is there. You don't just zoom in on that one word. You look at the whole context of the story or the, the, the monologue, and it makes a difference. And fingerspelling is a part of our language and a part of our culture. And in the context that is there, that gives us the clues um, to help us understand better what we are talking about. Mom? And mom, I teach part-time. I substitute teach. And every time I uh, tell the kids to watch me and tell a story, they will all just look around, you know, they're, like they're bored. They're bored with it. And uh, I said, look, I'm going to tell you the story in ASL. And they're like, okay, fine. And then I start to tell them the story in American Sign Language, and immediately they get quiet. And I said, what did I say? 
What did I tell you? And they answer all the questions, and you can see the difference. Uh, so when I do the sign language in English, they don't get it. But in American Sign Language, you know, they get it. And many deaf people say, I can't get these, or many teachers say, I can't get these kids to pay attention, and I can't get them to understand my stories. I said, it's because you're using English. Go back to the basics and use American Sign Language, and it opens their mind, and the pictures are there. Amen. Well, we are, we're out of time. I wish we had more time. This has been amazing. I wish we could do a series on this. And I, I, I want to thank my dad, my mom, my sister, and my hero, my Uncle Ray, missionary to Ecuador. Thank you for your time. And I thank God all the time I was born into a deaf family. I thank God for that. All right, stay tuned. I'll come back for just a while. Wrap up. God bless. Thanks for watching. I always get asked, how can I find more information about deaf people and sign language? Well, the good news is the internet has a lot of the information. Just hit in your search engine, American Sign Language, and you'll find out all kinds of information. Also, each state has its own commission for the deaf and school for the deaf. So I would encourage you to check those things out. They have a lot of deaf activities, deaf functions, sometimes free sign language classes. And I would encourage you to find those organizations and, and get together with some of those functions and, and be exposed to that. God bless. Have a great day. Honestly, I could talk to those people all day, my family, and just, it's just overwhelming. But I just want to wrap up and thank you for watching this program. Pray for the need to reach the deaf. Remember, the Listening Heart is a viewer-supported ministry, but most importantly, a prayer-supported ministry. So continue to watch, and we'll continue to provide. And remember, God is continually speaking, so make sure our heart is continually listening. Pastor Randy loves you. God bless, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching the program. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to remind you that this is a viewer-supported ministry. And for those that have supported us financially, thank you so much. For all of you that have supported us prayerfully, that's even more important. Thank you so much for that. I want to remind you that there are ways of contacting me. My information should be on the screen. I have a Twitter account. I have a Facebook account. I have an Instagram account. And of course, you can contact us through our website at the church at bbcjc.com. And my email's on there. I would love to help you in any way I can. You know what? I'm on a quest to still have questions answered. So as we continue to ask the questions, may we realize that God is the answer to all our questions. Keep your heart open. Keep on listening. Remember the theme, the listening heart. God is still speaking. Let's make sure we will continue to listen. God bless you. Thank you so much for your support. And I want you to make it a great day. We'll see you next time. If you would like to become a ministry partner with The Listening Heart, you may contact us at www.bbcjc.com. If you would like a DVD copy of this program, please visit our website at www.bbcjc.com. Listening Heart is a viewer-supported ministry.